Alright, so, I had a pretty good run of it. I very much enjoyed Calum. Now I'm going to say, I wouldn't mind playing Calum again in front of the cameras, if it came to it. Maybe not, maybe in a few. I don't know how many of these I'm going to end up putting up, because my life has a way of suddenly filling up fast, and then I won't be able to publish these for a good long time. So I'm going to put up the next one I'm doing now, and then probably I'll do a break for a while. I might do a third. But eventually I'd like to come back and look at Calum again. And basically I think there were quite a few things I did badly wrong. Um, first of all, I'd never played Calum before. I had, I think, prepared for a late age Calum game back in Dom 3. But for whatever reason I never actually played it. And um, yeah, so I didn't really know what I was doing. It's also been a long time since I played an Air Nation at all. So this whole Thunderstrike, Cloud Trapeze game going on, I um, didn't really know exactly what I was doing. Um, but I think I did pretty well, despite that. Um, yeah. Uh, the god... I think the god was kind of a stupid god. Um, first thing I'm going to do is show you what I reckon I would go for with a god. Now, I actually have two different gods that I would love to play as if I had to do it again. One of them is more fun, the other is a bit more powerful. I'm going to show you the bit more powerful one, because that way next time I play Calum, I can go, I can play the bit more fun one myself, and hopefully I can do it on camera, but I might do it single player. We see how it goes. But as I said, I'd love to see Calum again, and with me knowing more what I'm doing. So let's let's take a look at what I would go for as a god, or what I would recommend as a god. So just a sec. Alright, so basically in that game I took a Rainbow Titan, and I have a bit of beef with the god I chose. Basically, sight searching, it was not very optimal. Every two turns, I searched level 4 in Astral, Earth, and Water. And I only got a chance to search, like, four or five provinces before I needed uh, the god in the lab. So, what I was thinking is, <clears throat> I don't really need to search earth and water, because my kings are already searching it halfway. And I can easily boost my way up to searching it better. Um, what I would instead do is actually go with an immobile, because that wouldn't tempt me to go walking around with the god. And every turn walking is one turn I'm not doing something useful with the god. So I'm actually thinking in a mobile, and then my initial expansion, my first year or so with the god, I'll just be casting Arcane Probing, and hopefully I'll get a decent amount of, of Astral Pearls that way. I'll get twi I'll search twice as much for Astral, in exchange for not searching for the other two, but the other two aren't as important, because as I said, I'm already searching them. So what I was thinking is something a bit along these lines. Yeah, that's pretty good. That gives me plus six scales. Now, my last god, let's have a look. It was... Where is she? Oh, I'm playing late with Garus. Excuse me, this is the game I'm, uh... This is the game I've just started. Um... Alright, so... The god I had was, I believe, the Morning Star, and I had this. Which gives me not as good scales as I would be getting. Yeah, so that gives me plus four scales. This new god, um, not mobile, not flying. I mentioned before, the flying I think was completely useless, but. I would go with Immobile, because, like I said, I don't really need the god walking around, and every turn walking is a turn she, he it is not doing something more useful. So if I get the same level 7 Dominion, now I have better scales, so I don't probably need to take a dump scale like I did last time. Let's look at this. I could get something like this. Now, I'm not sure what scales I would go with. One option I was actually playing around with is something like this. Now, I'm flying, so I like it when the rivers are locked down. But... 
um, I have these ice clad troops, so I like the cold. But if I'm changing up my strategy a bit, I could actually de-emphasize the ice clads, go with the heat scale, take my dump in heat, and then all the rivers would be locked down, which would be quite nice. The downside, of course, is that then I don't get to use any of my lovely ice clads. But this is... my scales could be that. It could, I could also be more traditional about it. Go with... this. More like what I had last time, just without the dump scale. Um... So yeah, that's basically what I would do with my god. As I said, if I had to play it right now, I would actually play a different god, but I'm not going to show you that god. Let's just say that it's also immobile, but it has a lot more magic diversity than this option. I'll let you... I'll leave it as a exercise for the student to guess what kind of god I'm thinking of. But yeah, there's definitely a possibility of turning off the cold entirely, uh, but it's not necessary. But this way, my god could still cast the lovely crystal magic, still get me up to earth boots and that, my reinvig would be even stronger, better be better blessed for the kings, basically, less of a bless for the ice clads, but I don't even need to be using the ice clads at all. Um, you can cast arcane probing, and in the beginning I'll just alchemize whatever I don't need, and I'll get an al arcane probing off every turn for like a good six, seven turns, hopefully. And that way I could have a better astral income than I did in this game. So we're looking at a better astral income, and less water power and the possibility of um, heat scales. <clears throat> so that's more or less my god if I would do it again. Now let's take a look at the troop roster. I'll show you what I would change up in that department. See you in a sec. Alright, so here are my troops. In this game I basically went for the wingless. I hit the wingless hard. I had these guys and I had the Amazons. Now first of all, Amazons, I did not think were the right move. Um, basically, I got all excited when I saw that I had two Amazon provinces next to each other, but really Amazons are terrible, and they can't fly. And even if they're maybe marginally better than my Kalian troops, um, I would much prefer to have a worse army that flew to a better army that didn't fly. I spent a load of gems on Amazons. Look at this. I just had this pile of Zons sitting here the entire game, unable to fly. So, next time, I wouldn't go for Amazons at all. For Wingless, I would really just use the Corpse Constructs. They do the job. I mean, it means that people might start countering Corpse Constructs, and as I've mentioned, they're really easy to counter, so that's a downside. But, um... They're fine for what they do, and if I ever... And honestly, I'm not going to need a Wingless army that often. Basically wingless, maybe something like these guys, or even these guys. These guys here, they do not have storm flying, which means when I drop a storm, they become walkers, even though they flew in, which is very nice. Uh, if I, These guys could be flanking. So I would have an army, let's say the, a king or two, um, harab seraphs. Basically, these guys can drop a parting of the soul, which basically gives me some some chaff in the front to take evocations to get attacked by his main army. So the death to Harabs are super important, I think. I would have gone heavier on the Harabs just so I could get more of the death twos. And uh, every death two with a rod, a skull staff, is dropping a whole lot of chaff into his front line and evocations at the same time. So, an army would be, would have a lot less troops in it than I was using this game. Wouldn't have any Amazons, wouldn't have, it would have flyers basically, and I think I would go probably for these guys. Um, maybe a few, uh, a few of them as well. The ice clads are lovely, and if I did have the cold scale, I might use them. But they take a lot of resources. These, they take twice as many resources as a raptor. And, um, so I think the way I would do it would be I would have an ar- You know what I'll do, actually? Let- I'll start a game, and I will recruit an army, and I will show you what kind of army. I would have multiple smaller armies, so I'll grab one of them. I'll show you that. Just a wee second. Alright, so I'm thinking something like this, basically. Um, a king to drop storm, maybe wind guide, a couple of, uh, death- Seraphs, they would of course have a skull staff, hopefully. 
and then a bunch of air twos to cast Thunderstrike. And so this is just a handful of mages. I would have these guys, the gold wings here, guarding commander. I would have these guys attacking rear, and then I would have some archers to make use of the wind guy, just hitting him in the face. And so these guys would be parting the soul. These guys would be thunder striking, and then the king would be there for utility. I might even grab some uh, phantasmal warriors. I might just uh, do like um, storm, mist, uh, earth, what's it called? Wind guide, and um, orb lightning or something. And I would have hopefully quite a few of these armies. And they would be jumping around. I wouldn't engage them in the in the main army. I would be flanking around with these guys. And then I would, of course, have Eagle King Thugs flanking. And I would have Rain of Stones casters who, that I could throw at his main army. I think it could work out a lot better this way. If I just keep myself flying. Don't worry about non-flying options. Although, of course, I would grab a few corpse constructs just to have. If I did have the cold scales... It would be worth grabbing some of these guys to um, guard my capital, more or less. And um, the other thing is, I have these three sacred options. And uh, I only ever used these resource-intensive ice clads here, these wingless. And I'm thinking what I would do is actually uh, take another look at these guys. They're stealthy, they have a lance. They could be very nice. They might uh, I might have arm proper armies like this and then geared kings, and then utility rain of stones casters, and then I might grab some sneaky sneaky Maria warriors with an area seraphine, for example. So I would have a lot of vectors. The problem, of course, is I would not have a main doomstack army. I would only be using flanking options, and f against his doomstack, I would have geared kings that I could hit him in the back with. I could, for example, hit him with one of these armies and maybe two or three geared kings. And the geared kings could uh, flank, hit him in the back, try and kill some of his mages, while this army just held out in the front, for example. But what I would probably do, he has a doom stack, let's say. I have a rain of stones caster. I hit his doom stack every turn with rain of stones and try and whittle it down that way. Um, I have other options as well. I could, uh, I was thinking one option would be to use, um, take a thing from Late Age Alms book and use Lamias. It's another good option for a, a missile king. Well, this wouldn't be a king, this would be a harib. Uh, maybe one of these with a staff means he can cloud trapeze. So he cloud trapezes in, drops a few Lamias, retreats. I think that could be pretty brutal to a Doomstack. So, the way I would deal with Doomstacks would be to whittle them down with flankers, basically. And then, in the flanking war, I would attempt to win that way, gobble up all his rear provinces. Alright, let's take a look at the Ulm War. Just a sec. When I said uh, Lamy is there, I meant Lamashtas. I often uh, make little mistakes like that, you may have noticed. But this time... I will catch it. Um, so yeah, Alm. Basically, in the Alm War, I'll confess the Amazons did pay for themselves, more or less. I think in an early war, there's definitely something to be said for having a Doomstack main army, even if um, it's going to be a lot weaker than his. But mainly, the reason why that would be there would be for... Um, to be a decoy, more or less. Um... I'm really cap dependent because of the kings. If I ever find myself at war with Caleb, I'm going to beeline for his capital. Boom. And try and knock out his king production. But um, if you have an army, a main walking army, then you can play a little grab ass running around. He'll chase your army around, blah, blah, blah. While at the same time, you're flying around dominating his lands. So my biggest uh, problem for the Elmore is it took me a long time to co conquer all this stuff. Um, I really should have uh, had enough vectors of attack that I could uh, take out his flankers quickly 
and then turn to gobbling up all his hinterland. I think the war would have gone a lot quicker. The big problem with that war was that it took too long, and it exhausted me too much. In particular, I lost too many kings. Um, there's a few specific things that I think were foolish. One thing, I have all these kings, and they're always dying. I think giving them Pendants of Luck or Mistletoe Garlands could be a pretty big deal. Um, for survivability. They only have 19 hit points, so like one in four hits is going to be fatal. So having lock on them will make it so that one in seven hits is fatal, which is a big difference. So yeah, um, I'll have a better astral income hopefully from the new god. Early on, I'll roll that into Pendants of Luck, and I'll want every king to be lucky more or less. Mistletoe Garlands are another option in case I have good nature and bad uh, astral, for example. But yeah, basically every time a new king comes out, I hand him a pendant, and he hangs on to that pendant until possibly he needs the slot for something else. But um, by that time, he should be experienced and geared and less likely to die randomly. I had all, all these seeking arrows killing kings. That was pretty preposterous. The other thing about the Ulmor, um, as I said, I don't have much experience with air nations, and I forgot a little gem that might have helped. Wouldn't have been a big deal, but definitely missed over here. Battlewide spell that knocks down a pennant precision on your on your spells. I think that could have helped a lot because he was sitting there belching forth evocations much more than I was, so and I had a wind guide. So if I just dropped a mist might have helped, and I didn't, because I didn't know it was there, because I hadn't played an Air Nation in so long. So basically with the Elm War, I would guard my kings better, and bear in mind that your kings and your death to Harabs, I lost a ton of battle mages. Throwing armies against his army was utter foolishness. I should have thrown missiles against his army. Someone, Cloud Trap, he's in, create a threat on the battlefield, and get out. And if I did that every turn, maybe several times a turn, I could whittle down his armies. I would never have had to bash into him and lose eight times like I did. So that, I would have maybe a walking army, maybe two or three flying armies, just to cause decoys to get him confused and not gunning for my capital. And then um, have better flanking options. Those stealthy guys, if I didn't have the kings for it, or else geared kings, of course, as a gold standard, and win the flanking war fast and hard, and gobble up all his territory soon after the war began, while I basically fent with his main army, keeping him off balance, keeping him from doing anything too dangerous with that army, while I gobble up all his lands. That's the way I should have played this war. Instead, I kept recruiting masses of Zons and hitting him in the head with it. I played this as though I were playing EA Airmor or, you know, some other nation like that, a fire nation with good evocations is how I played it. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have played it like Calum. Fly around, fent, flank. I think if I had to play that war again, I would do it much better. And hopefully that would set me up in a better position for the Baratesian War. So, yeah, let's uh, take a quick look at Baratos War. Okay, a few specifics first of all. These guys, they're cheap, they're underwater thugs. I let Baratos hold on to the water that entire war. I really should have, uh, the water should have been mine since I had these lovely underwater thugs. But I was, you know, pretty quickly he, I had one, and my god died, you know. I'm not going to need to say it, but that losing the global, losing the god, retarded. But yeah, I should have uh, grabbed two or three of them and just held all the water. In any mid to late game war, unless if you're fighting a water nation, the water should be yours because I have flying, amphibious, regenerating, underwater thugs. And I should have used them a bit better. I think these guys are really good, actually. Um, having... Astral with a bit of water on your god is a big deal. Now, actually, when I showed you that god uh, my, earlier in the episode, um, you could take a point, a, one less scale, and get a point of water on that god. So if you're in a water-heavy map, for example, that would be the move, because then you can get these... I don't know their name, Fravasi... Ahuranis. You could get 
Ahranis, and I think they're pretty good. And um, I should have been hitting them a bit harder. Another big deal, I used... I had Geared Kings, and then I had Thunderstrike... Um, Reign of Stones Kings, and I basically used the Reigns of Stone... Reign of Stone Kings badly. I shouldn't have been wandering around the hinterland conquering territory with Reign of Stones Kings. If I didn't have the gear, I should have done that thing I showed you last episode with, um with the uh, Phantasmal Warriors. They work pretty well. Rain of Stones Kings should be missiles. They should cloud trapeze in, burn an eight something, and run away. And then go back to the lab and next turn do it again. And uh, instead I was using them as though they were geared kings on the cheap, which was kind of wrong. Um, more generally, um, I should have been better prepared, of course. I mentioned in the Elmore, I should have had more kings. I should have had more death herbs. I should not have had a pile of useless Amazons eating resources, eating upkeep every turn. I should have had a flying army. Um, but after the start of the war, I think I did as well as I could have done, given that I didn't have... Well, not as well, but I don't have that many complaints with how I played it, given the resources I had at the beginning of the war. The big deal was I should have prepared, and as the All War was winding down, or even as soon as Baratos' war ended, I should have had one eye on preparing for Baratos' war. And I should have prepared by getting some flying armies on the go, getting some Ahuranis on the go, getting all my kings as geared as can be, and, um, yeah. I don't, I mean, I my, resor my, research, my research definitely trailed off in that war, but... I don't think that was a big deal. I had all the targets I really needed. Um, of course, these level 7 things, if you look at it here, I don't have them yet. Um, Fog Warriors is huge, but I didn't really use armies, so it wouldn't have really helped that much. The other one is... Where is it? It's not Thaumaturgy, it's Enchantment. The other one is Mass Flight, but I don't need it because I already have everyone flying, and I should have uh, been using Map Move Flyers, so Mass Flight wouldn't have been a big help. Dome of Solid Air might have helped. I should have gotten some domes up. Um, I mean, it wouldn't have been a big deal. It mainly would have stopped uh, uh, seeking arrows or whatever. Um, yeah, I was I was on the back foot from turn one, and that's why I lost the war. I should have been better prepared for the war, but given the preparation I had, I think I did fairly well. Of course strategically I could have done a lot better I could have this this was the key to the entire game and I wasn't thinking about it thronishly enough I should have gone for that throne turn one I should have gone through alms lands because they had an air gem income and because they didn't have vengeful vengeful waters and I knew it wasn't his dominion so dominions can turn nasty at any moment, so I should have conquered Alm's lands instead of going for Baratos' lands, and I should have uh, doubled down on trying to get this throne, which I really didn't. I was dicking around. I should have been beelining for the throne. Since my army was wingless as well, I should have been all about getting my army to the throne. Um, but it was trapped. This I And yeah, his army here, I could have had a better missile barrage at it. The problem, of course, is you can't cloud trapeze something onto a sieging army. But I could have just thrown things flying, flew things into it. I just let it sit there. I was worrying about this stuff. I should have had, like, a designated king who just... or two. Or, like, a king and a... and a harab who every turn just created a threat for that army, killed a bit of it, and just whittled it down like that. And, yeah. But I think I played that war better. I mean, I didn't do as well because I was wildly unprepared for it. But I kind of understood the nation better by that time, and I think I played it better. Um, if I had to do it again, I would be better prepared, but otherwise... And I would go for... I would pay much more attention to the thrones. But otherwise, I think it was more successful war than the all one even though I lost... Alright, so generally, I didn't necessarily know exactly what I was doing this LP, but I learned a lot, I had a lot of fun, I definitely enjoy 
trying a new nation, even though you do better if you play the same nation again later. I always seem to want to go for a new na nation every time I play, and I get more fun out of that, even if it means I don't win as much. But winning isn't everything, and yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I learned a lot, and actually, I would love to play Caleb again. Although, you know, every time I'll be tempted to try something new as well. But maybe in a different age, but maybe even in the early age. I do really like the kings. I think they're neat mechanic, the the entire nation is geared around this one guy, I, sh I could, yeah. Um, the god was dumb, I made some horrible mistakes like losing my global and my god on one turn, I staled, uh, I mean by my standards, I think that was a very reasonable amount of staling, because I, as I've mentioned, stale a lot. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I'm pretty pleased with my first LP. And I will see you guys in the next one. Um, I've already began work on the next LP. And um, soon enough, you will see it. And I'm looking forward to publishing this one, see what you guys have to say. And, you know, I made a lot of mistakes, so feel free to lambast me in the either in the YouTube comments or on the forums. You know, Hopefully you know where to find the forums. Um, it's dezura.com. Dominion forums. It's a very good place if you play Dominions. Or even if you just want to... I don't know. Maybe if you don't play it's not so good. Um, yeah. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And I will for sure be putting up another one you know, whenever that game ends. So in like six months or something. But yeah. A lot of fun. And I'm pretty pleased that I came in second even though I didn't really know what I was doing. See you guys in a while.